On today's video, Greg is gonna do a sick pinwheel design using mission control gel. You're gonna wanna check this out right now. I'm going to take you through a tutorial that is going to show you how to sculpt the nail first before we lay in the mission control design over the surface. All right, so what you see here is just the practice finger and nail. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and clip off a majority of the plastic off of the tip. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of round off the edge so that I have just enough of a free edge to get that form underneath. Now what I want to be able to do is I want to replicate preparation, right? So we need to make sure that we're going to push our customer's cuticles back. And then I'm going to be using an arbor band, right? A mandrel and arbor band to gently remove shine from the surface of the nail. I'm going to be running at around 3,000 RPMs. What I want to be able to do is just kind of gently tickle away the shine around the perimeter. As soon as I'm done removing shine around the perimeter, I'm just going to lightly feather away the shine from corner to corner. Make sure that when you are doing this, it is gentle pressure. You don't want to put, again, a lot of force because if you do, then the bit will just stop. So again, very, very gentle all the way around. You don't want to create pressure. Let the electric file do the work for you. All right, so as soon as we're done removing shine from the surface of the natural nail, we're going to use swipe. And what I like to do is just give it one pump I'm gonna come through, I'm gonna cleanse the surface of the nail. If you choose to use a lint-free wipe, you could do that as well. Since there is a little bit of moisture on top, I'm just gonna make sure that we clean it all the way. And what this is going to do is it's going to set this up for protein bond application. And what we wanna do is we wanna be able to apply protein bond from cuticle to free edge on all 10 nails. You wanna avoid the skin at all costs. Then again, as soon as you're done doing all 10 nails, what you're gonna do is you're gonna come in and you're going to apply one more coat. Two coats for maximum adhesion. This is prepped and ready for your sculptured acrylic nail. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make sure that we place our form right flush to the front end of the natural nail. You're gonna notice that I pinch the form tight. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna open this up and then what I like to do is once I get it underneath, I'm gonna use my other hand just to kind of rock it up so the form is absolutely straight and flush to that end, right? You don't have to worry about sealing that back end. All I'm trying to do is ensure that I have a really, really tight, snug fit right here in front of the free edge. Okay, so what I wanna be able to do is I wanna be able to submerse my brush and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bounce, bounce, bounce and then I'm going to dab off the excess on the back end of my brush and then what this is going to do is it's going to give me the ability to set it down onto the form without it running. There's just enough self-leveling characteristics where I'm going to be able to use the body of my brush and quickly get it to this corner by sculpting it from the surface of the free edge, you see that from the top. And as soon as I get it all the way even, nice and even from that, from corner to corner, whatever excess is here, I'm going to be able to use the body, the brush, and maneuver this into the right shape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to shape this into the most even type of free edge. I'm gonna taper this end down so that we have a really, really tight coffin shape. And you can see I'm trying to build this tip as flush right, to the nail, but as even as I can from side to side. All right, so now I have to get a pearl that is going to self-level, right, so that it runs into the perimeter right, with the least amount of ledge. I don't want to force it with my brush. I'm going to be able to tap around the perimeter so it just levels perfectly around that point. 
Right, so when I submerse my brush, I need to make sure that I get enough liquid to pick up a big enough bead. And then what I'm going to do, watch this. As soon as I pick this up, right, I'm gonna wait. One, two, three, four, five. And then what I wanna do is set this down. Now notice, right, it's starting to move. It's starting to move, starting to move. Right, and as I'm using the tip of my brush around the edge, you can see it moving down to this point. I'm gonna brush it down here from the corner and then through the front of the bead and then again off to the side, making sure that nothing runs down onto the edge. But as you can see, I'm trying to create a natural upper arch, right? Everything is running back down this way. Nice and even, nice and even, but as I slide it up and then start feathering it from the sides, the front, right, and the side right here, everything tapers down towards the tip. I get great shape. Everything rolls perfect around the edges with the least amount of ledge. And then that way, as I brush it through, I'm not forcing it around the perimeter of the nail. I'm allowing the acrylic to self-level by itself, right? Least amount of work is going to set me up for the least amount of filing. All right, so once we have this done, I need to make sure that we fill the front end of the nail. I'm gonna go ahead and get another bead. I'm going to bounce, bounce, bounce. I'm going to get a nice right tap on the back side of my brush. I'm going to literally set it in between the first bead and the free edge. And whatever is left off, I'm going to be using the body of my brush to walk it down over the tip right, to fill in any leftover space. Perfect. So once we're done doing this, once all the, the space is actually filled out, I'm going to allow this to dry, and then we're going to file it into perfection. Once the nail is filed and finished, we are now ready for our psychedelic pinwheel design. All right, so, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my tile and I'm going to use a few different colors from Mission Control. I'm going to use Sonic, Clash. I'm gonna be using Molten, Mega Jam. I'm gonna be using Fizz. And I'm gonna be using Neon Yellow 101. And I'm gonna start laying out our foundation. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use just a nail art brush that I have. And what I wanna be able to do is just kind of load it up with fizz. Then I'm going to start from one point here in the corner and then I'm just gonna kind of trace out in just a nice, right, kind of wave all the way down, all right? And, and again, I can just kind of touch the very, very tip to just get this as high as I can with the most precision. And then all I'm trying to do is just outline, right? So bring this out and kind of swivel that down all the way down to this point. And then I'll get the same amount for the other side, right? From here, I'm just gonna wave it and then just use the tip of the brush all the way down so that I have a nice outline of where I want the white to go. Boom. So once I actually have that established right there, I'm gonna go ahead and get that inside the light to freeze it. I only need to get it inside the light for 10 seconds. That way I can continue to work on the rest of the coverage. Once I actually have that wavy outline, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my master gel brush. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna load it up with fizz, which is the white. And then I'm just going to kind of just really keep my brush behind those lines. And this is going to paint out all of the detail that I need to fill, right, through the surface. So I'm really trying hard. You notice I load my brush and then I'm, I'm able to come in and actually paint out re a real great coverage all the way through just to make sure. And again, it doesn't matter if it's streaky in some of the areas. Um, if you can't reach like in the corner, then just use the tip of the brush just to kind of touch at it. 
right? Or you could use your detailer brush to come in, but what I'm gonna do is just kind of go through and fill that space, making sure that we have great coverage all the way down and through the tip. All right, all right. so once that is actually applied, just like that, I'm gonna go back inside the light and make sure that we freeze it. Now since I've applied a little bit more, I'm just gonna set this for at least 30 seconds. If you're doing tight lines or really, really thin uh, detailing, you only need 10, but since I've applied a little bit more, right, to cover the whole entire free edge, I'm gonna set that for 30. While that's curing, you can work on the other nails, right, to basically fill out whatever is missing from the surface. All right, so what I wanna do again, if, if, you know, if there is any area that needs to be kind of detailed, you could always take your brush, right? If we need better coverage and just kind of go through and make sure again with a really, really thin amount that we're just kind of painting in the areas that we need. I just wanna get a really opaque type of uh, coverage on that tip. Now, since I'm barely touching right the surface and I'm only going to get this inside the light for 10 seconds, I'm going to be using the neon yellow. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just get this onto a smaller detailer and I'm just going to start kind of painting over the white. Right, and because we have a white base, the yellow is really going to explode. And then from this point, I'm going to load up my brush and then start off thin again and then really towards the corner, right? What I'm gonna do is just kind of thicken it out. And so this is going to add kind of that pinwheel effect onto the corner. And then once we actually have that set, I'm gonna get it inside the light and freeze it before we move on to the next. And one of the things you can do, uh, I'm going to be using a little bit of gloss and I'm gonna place this on my tile. I wanna show you guys a really cool tip and trick. I'm just gonna lay that down uh, right on the tile. And instead of using solvent to kind of rinse out your brushes, what you can do is you can take that clear gel and just kind of pull through. And what that's going to do is it's gonna pull a lot of the color out Right, and then keep your brush really, really tight so that when you move on to the next color, you don't have to constantly wipe your brush as you are going through your design. Okay, so what we're gonna do next is we're going to choose, again, some of this awesome Sonic, all right? And then I'm just gonna load the tip of my brush and then I'm just going to kind of paint. So this is a much thicker viscosity, but what I wanna be able to do is use that just to kind of get in tight around the edge. And then as soon as I have it kind of loaded up in the corner, then I'm just gonna lighten up my, my touch so it gets real tight here. And then what we wanna be able to do is follow up on the opposite side, all right, to kind of create that pinwheel effect. And then I'm just going to be using the tip of my brush just again, just to get right in to that point, filling in all the space. All right, once we have that set, I'm gonna go ahead and get side light and freeze it before we move on to the next color. Next, what I wanna be able to do is use, again, another real nice contrasting color. So I'm going to use Molten. Then I try to keep my brush as vertical as I can, right, as I'm coming down the edge. That way I'm only working with the very, very tip of the brush as I come down and just kind of join right to the front. We're gonna go ahead and get this inside the light and freeze it before we use the next color. All right, now I'm gonna move to Clash. I'm using the same detailer brush, right? That way I can kind of just tap at it and load it up just filling in as much space as I can with a really, really light touch. And then what I wanna do is, as soon as I get to this point, I'm just gonna kinda of chase it along the edge. Do the same thing on this side. Boom, all the way, just as close to the edge, leaving enough space for my last color at the end. 
Let's go ahead and get that inside the light, freeze it before we add the last color. What I'm gonna do last but not least is take Mega Jam, which is the really, really hot pink. All right, just kind of run my brush through the surface and just make sure that we're going to paint out just the remaining white that is on the nail. All right, perfect. So we have that set, I'm gonna go inside the light. After we are done laying in all the color, I'm gonna apply the ultimate finish gel over the surface. What this is gonna do is gonna seal the color in and it's gonna finalize the pinwheel design. If you enjoyed our video, please give us a like and also subscribe to our channel. Free education, tons of videos that you can watch. You can head into our insane library and get educated on nails right now.